just keep enjoying it and and just see how it evolves because often it evolves in a way you know in a natural way and things will come to you at the right times and so yeah I just say take a chill pill (laughs) (laughs) I did I tried the violin (laughs) in primary school which as you can imagine eh, 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 not hey everyone welcome to the convo couch today we've got Katie Moore actress presenter how did you get started uh well I actually got started in England so originally I'm English got started basically when I was seven years old I've kind of done acting performing my whole life and it's kind of random I turned to my mum one day and I just said I really want to go to acting class no one in my family does any acting or performing or anything like that so I I have no idea where this came from Um, but I used to go and watch um, plays when I was younger for my birthday and looked at the theatre and just thought I really want to be one of the chorus children Um, and then anyway finally a few years later auditioned and kind of lived that dream out and I think one of my first professional roles was as a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz at the Bristol Old Vic Theatre which is a theatre in the city that I live well from Bristol so, so they kind of set the path for that you. That set the tone. And you've never looked back and ever since. I kind of never looked back. And yeah, I did I did a lot and I was very determined. I wanted to go to drama school. I didn't want to go to uni. And then auditioning at 17 for English drama schools was quite tough. Like yeah. walking into RADA and at 17 and quivering in my boots. And them saying, go and get life experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's and what I was like, say. oh, yeah, they all say that. Yeah. And it's hard at that age. Like I found rejection really hard. And yeah. I kind of had this love-hate relationship with acting at that point and continued to try and pursue it into my sort of early 20s and then kind of ended up going through a breakup at that point and then um, wanting to move to London with my friend and I sort of left acting slightly on the back burner and went into a different route to do public relations, did internships and stuff and it dropped away a little bit. And then ended up moving to Sydney four years ago and kind of finally got myself settled here and then it just came out again because I think if you're an actress or you a performer or anything it's like a bug yeah that you just can't ever shake however much you try and shove it away or so it came back and I was like I've, I've got to try and I need to do it again I need to do some stuff here so I did a course at NIDA a short course at NIDA which was awesome and then I did a screen acting advanced course at Screenwise which was really good as well and then most recently I've done a show reel course with um, 75% old school, um, which was great. So now I've got a little show reel and um, I'm a permanent resident now as well, which is awesome. So I guess next step is to hopefully um, see about getting an agent. I mean, I've just been trying to source a lot of my own work at the moment, which has been good. And um, already this year I've done loads of amazing, cool projects, met some awesome people. So. Yeah, I guess the bug's still with me. <laughs> I can't yeah. shake it. Yeah, no, I mean, I've heard some of the creatives <clears throat> saying, like, once an actor, always an actor. Yeah, it's, it's my first love. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm single as well, so right now it's my only love. <laughs> but it's, it's the thing that just makes me feel me yep. and, like, alive, and it's very cathartic for me. Um, so when I was younger, I was used to be kind of quite shy, which a lot of people now are like, what? You seem very confident. But it wasn't I didn't have confidence. It's just I was in a school and I kind of felt, you know, there were a lot of loud people. And then in drama classes, I realised all these people kind of crumbled away and actually I could be any character I wanted to be. And it was such a good escapism and I could experience all these things without actually having done that or having been that person if that makes sense so you can go and live all these amazing lives how, how do you find um the differences are between the industries in the uk versus here in Sydney? yeah i have found it quite different actually um i think here it's kind of been a bit more welcoming um and, and not necessarily easier but i think um people from all different backgrounds all different training levels here can get into the industry and have a shot and there's so much out there and it's easier to crack in. In UK, I felt it was harder sometimes if you hadn't gone to certain drama schools or you hadn't done certain things, it was harder to kind of um, break through a bit or, you know, get agents or get certain jobs. Um, And I think there's many more people. Um, Whereas here, I guess it's a slightly smaller pool 
and yeah it just it just feels a bit more welcoming um it can be quite intimidating in in England as well in saying that though I think what England has is like an amazing culture for arts and films and tv like awesome writing amazing series here in Australia I feel it's lacking I think it's coming I think there's loads of cool young creatives doing some amazing stuff out there now but I think it still has some way to go to kind of break through I don't know there's there doesn't seem to be as much breadth of like new film or tv or theatre coming out here mm. Yeah, I think Australia is definitely pushing for more incentives for yeah, productions to come over which this is way. great. Yeah, I, th- I think there is going to be more coming. Yeah. So it's in a kind of exciting time to see how it's going to... Pan out. How it's going to pan out and hopefully more roles for women as well. Yeah. Hopefully. So um, are you quite big on this whole diversity um, matter in terms of screen art? Yeah. So seeing more representation? Definitely. I think it's a funny one because actually growing up, I always wanted to be more diverse. I always wish I had more of an edge or a different look or I was very unique. Because when you go to auditions or drama school auditions, if you're already a bit different from the general mass, then you've already got an edge. And I just felt quite generic. I was like, here's another brunette coming through. Like, great, you know, English accent. I think, oh, at least here, I'm something a bit different because I've got an English accent. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, but at least it gives me something a bit different. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I kind of felt like I fell into the bit of the math and I always wished to be a bit more diverse, to be honest. And I've seen um, some friends and people in the UK that have got a bit more of a different look um, do quite well. Uh, but in saying that, I think it's really important for for diversity in film. And there's still lots of groups that are underrepresented. And I think, you know, life and the world is so big that we need to see more characters coming through and more of a like, realistic view rather than the same types of people and characters and actors okay. as well. Do yeah. you feel like you get typecast a lot? Uh, yeah, do you know what? Sometimes I get cast as like a bitchy character. Really? <laughs> Which really? I'm really not. Wow. But yeah, I don't know, I, I, that's quite fun. Yeah, it's so interesting. Like sometimes yeah. certain people get cast in a certain, uh, in a certain role constantly only yeah. because they look a certain way, but they're not actually like that in real life. Yeah. So it's quite an interesting um, contrast. It is. I think so. I've got quite big eyes, which is <laughs> not- I always remember an acting teacher saying like, <laughs> you've got these crazy psycho eyes. Ooh, and I was like, that's how oh. she described it. <laughs> <laughs> that's intense. <laughs> How old were you? Yeah, I was like a teenager. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great way to have um, um, the ego. <laughs> no, I was like, what the hell? Uh, but yeah, so I, yeah, I have played quite a few bitchy characters. So it's more of like, um, I guess, in a girl group or in the circle of friends. Yeah, you know, or like the bitchy friend or um, the sort of bitchy queenie girl or they're like um i'm just doing a play recently and i'm this kind of very ott friend who's just been on a date and she's like very dramatic okay so (laughs) do you feel like you're sort of like getting used to this role a little bit now like when you get a role like that you get onto it i think so and i definitely think for me um i'm like early 30s now so I've kind of come into myself more as a person and I don't feel like I take rejection so harshly and things like that. And it's made the whole process so much more fun. Like going to auditions or just, you know, putting myself into a role. I feel like I enjoy it more and I have a bit more maturity. Like that whole life experience thing they were talking about way back when. Yeah. I, I get it a bit more now. Yeah, it, it makes actually sense. Yeah. It does help. And I see it in other actors and um, creative people's as, people as well when they've got that background they just bring a bit more weight and a bit more wisdom sometimes if you're gonna give some advice to your 17 year old self who's dealing Uh, with like rejection in the acting industry what kind of advice would you give i feel like don't stress and also it's actually meant to be fun (laughs) (laughs) you know everyone takes you know it is it is a series it is an art but it's also playing like acting is playing and being in a make-believe world and actually it's enjoying like I love it that's really the core of why I do it you sh- you know if you're if you're not enjoying something it becomes too serious you actually lose the magic behind it so for me I would have said let go of the path you think you're going to go on just keep enjoying it and and just see how it evolves because often it evolves in a way you know in a natural way and things will come to you at the right times and so yeah I just say take a chill pill <laughs> <laughs> 
Take the chill pill. Wow. I was, yeah. Well, I'd just come out the auditions and be like, my life is over. Oh God, I'm a failure. It's that went like, horribly and then you just replay everything. Yeah, you replay wrong. everything. It's like, why like, would you oh do my God, that my Shakespeare yourself? model was so bad. And it's like, yeah, you and a million other people, you know. Yeah. So I always think actually the people that are the most successful, successful are the people that persevered and just, you know, had the resilience. And because people get knocked back to knock back knocked back <laughs> knocked back all the time yeah. in this kind of industry so you just kind of have to roll with the punches and you know take a learning where you can and then see where the road takes you and just have a bit more flexibility with it i'm not a huge fan of taylor swift okay. but what i have to say for the girl is the girl has got guts like she will come out against what can be quite scary corporations, the big people behind, you know, the arts that we're trying to do. And she'll say, this isn't right. And she takes it to her fans. She takes it to the open forum. She she gives herself a good voice box and she kind of stands up for what she believes in. And I have to say, that's quite impressive of her for just a girl. And I think that's why she's done so well as well, is she's quite a powerful female and she's not scared to not say what she thinks even if it's against other big names in the industry so yeah, yeah. i'm kind of like girl power <laughs> okay yeah I, yeah that's, that's i respect a... that i think as a girl sometimes and you know i tend to do this sometimes you kind of are a bit of a people pleaser you know and especially if you're kind of acting or doing anything creative you want to do well so you kind of want to appease people sometimes or you know do right by them and be direct and that kind of thing. And sometimes it's really hard to then kind of stand up or have a voice against something if it's going to be a differ differing opinion. That's That can be quite hard. I know, obviously, society is changing, and but, you know, that can be still hard. It still takes bravery mm. and gut. So I think anyone doing that is is impressive, and I have to put my hands up to them. Okay. So, and you're not yeah. a Taylor Swift fan. Well, I do actually <laughs> Well, I was like uh, biting my tongue you're back and then of me. Were you like, well, she's very... Oh, I, I like no, the Okay, so I just Oops. don't... Oh, that's our alarm. First one. I um, I just don't love the older song, her older music, like... Right. Um, what was that Romeo and Juliet song? Oh, yeah, Romeo, uh, I was, Romeo and Juliet. I was... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know the words. Yeah. Anyway, I don't. I'm not a fan of that. Okay, but I actually really like her new stuff. The so new, the, newest the newer album. songs, okay. like Delica, I really like. Like some of her songs, I do really like. Okay. Um, what kind of but, music do you listen to? Oh my god, low like everything. Okay. I actually don't really have a genre. I like anything from rap, hip hop. I mean, I do like R and B because that's how I like grew up in Bristol. We would like go out and dance to R and B. So okay. I have like a soft spot. <laughs> Like R and B, also my first love. <laughs> um, but I like classical. I like um, like then like Kings of Leon. I like I like most music. The only genre I'm not a huge fan of is like probably like punk rock or like death heavy metal. metal. Death, <laughs> death metal. Imagine if I was though. How good would that be? It'd be yeah. Such like juxtaposition. I'd be like, I'm a death metal fan. Yeah. But and then, yeah. Yeah. I just depends on my mood. But music is massive for me. Like I've always got my headphones in, listening to Spotify, or it really helps me motivate me and for roles and stuff. Yeah. Massively helps me get into the zone or get into the role or like can evoke a mood. I think music's amazing. I wish I, I wish I was better at playing instruments actually, but <laughs> never was very good at that. You tried learning when you were a kid? I did, I tried the violin okay. <laughs> in primary school, which as you can imagine, eh, 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 <laughs> not, did not sound good. Okay. But actually my family, like um, they're, some of them are quite musical. Like my dad plays guitar, my brother oh, plays nice. guitar, my brothers played keyboard, but it was just something I never, I never really got, which is, you know, it's kind of part of the creative world, but I think because it's a little bit more mathematical in the brain, my brain function just... Switched off. It just didn't click. <laughs> I love music and I yeah. love listening to it and I love hearing people play because it's, again, like any art form I love because it's like you can just feel the emotion coming through. Um, but yeah, I had to leave that one. That's all right. You've got acting. <laughs> you've got music <laughs> and you've got acting. Yeah, exactly. Not quite a triple threat, but... Oh, definitely Harry. Yeah? Yeah. You think he's the cooler one? Yeah. He's He's got less pressure. Yes, Because Will's going to be king. Yeah. So that's full on. Yeah. But I always liked Harry. Okay. He's like the cheeky chappy and... 
I think he's got a lovely voice.